Hi, this is Casper Van Dien, and you're listening to FSF Popcast. You know what to do. Kill them all with kindness and love. Hello, guys, and welcome to the FSF Podcast. I'm Tim. I'm your host. Of course, we have Ben, our ever trusty co host here, and a special guest host, the very first guest in the history of the FSF Podcast, Captain Rex, aka Sean Vest, the, the one, the only, the, co- the cosplay clone trooper, Captain Rex. So, our actual guest today is a longtime actor who you know from shows like Salvage Marines. And one of my favorite shows that I loved his, his reoccurring cameo in it, Con Man. Absolutely love that. <laughs> Uh, and a little known, you know, sci-fi flick you may have heard of. I don't know, Starship Troopers or something. I certainly hadn't heard of it. I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, uh, we are very excited to welcome Casper Van Dien to the FSF podcast. Welcome to the show, Casper. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate yeah, very, it. Very excited to have you on today. Uh, so excited, in fact, we had to bring a special co-host in uh, because, well, he demanded it. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of begging and pleading for this one. Uh, there wasn't so much begging and pleading as in, you will let me in the show. And uh, I said, yes. <laughs> well, they worked, and, and I'm proud of them. That's the way you do it. You know, I always tell, uh, I used to tell my children, if you don't ask, it's no. So, well, yes. there you go. Wise words. There you go. All right. So, um, as has become standard in our show, uh, because we are self proclaimed happy nerds we love a good origin story we like to find out what makes the person who they are well how they became who they are and all those type of things so in the story of casper von Dien, what were your influences as a young man that encouraged you to reach out for a career in the arts uh interesting um i uh i grew up in a military family my uh dad was a teacher when i was growing up with him but before that he was in the navy for 20 years uh in the in the first five years six years of my life, but then he taught NJROTC and my mom was a preschool teacher and a nurse. And so I grew up in Ridgewood, New Jersey, um, after living in Japan where he was handed the Navy base back to the Japanese. So I always thought I would go into the military, um, because every other male in my family had served in my grandfather, Marine in World War One, my, my other grandfather, medical corpsman. Um, so, you know, everybody in my, all the men in my family had served in the military, except for one uncle and than myself. I went to an all guy military school, my junior and senior year, Admiral Farragut Academy, Navy. So I really thought I was going to go that route. But my parents had introduced me to, and because they're educators, they brought me to off Broadway and Broadway shows and seeing that I'd go kicking and screaming, come back singing and dancing and uh, reading literature. I, I, I read a lot when I was a kid and, um, and I watched a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows and so I, I blame my parents solely for getting me into this. Um, you know, because of, of them, I, I, I have a huge love for anything nerdy, pop culture-y, and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, just been a fan. And it was fun for me because when Starship Troopers came out, they, they came in and they go, hey, you want to go to Comic-Con to promote this? Uh, it's a thing called Comic-Con, and nobody else wants to go, but, you know, it's this thing with all these like, fans that go to it. And I'm like, I want to go, totally want to go. And they're like... Well, you're the only actor that wants to go. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's awesome. And they're like, okay. But I went down there, and it was just me and Paul Verhoeven and Ed Newmeyer. And then this year two, I did it for Tarzan. And year three, I did it for Sleepy Hollow. But Tim Burton and, and Johnny Depp couldn't come. They were supposed to. But the last minute, they, they, they ran over in the movie they were filming together. So they couldn't, you know, couldn't make it for that one. So it was just me and one of the producers for um, Sleepy Hollow. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. So I've just... For, for years, I've, I've been involved with it. It's just something I absolutely love. I mean, my wife's a cosplayer. She does a lot of uh, Wonder Woman. She does all those Wonder Women up there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. She she was That's... a reference model for Wonder Woman. And uh, she, she's beautiful. I don't know how I got that lucky. Um, but uh, <laughs> she, uh, Jennifer Wenger, she's she's hot. And so we have this Wonder Woman. I put hers up there and there. And I just, we have weird things around. So we're all, we're, uh, I'm very nerdy, uh, you know, love the arts perfect all right so let wow. me ask you as a fo- as a follow-up to that you said that your parents took you to a lot of shows and things and you went in kicking and screaming you came back singing and dancing was there one in particular where you like that was like the 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 turning point the tipping point where where you went oh yeah that's that's what i want to do that's because of the uh, particular show well I, I loved west side story when i was a kid 
Um, okay. I, but I, I, my dad introduced me to Tarzan films. So I was, yes, Broadway, I, I saw all that. So I have the arts and interest in things, but he introduced me to Tarzan films and I started watching different movies and I started watching different directors. And then I watched like the Magnificent Seven. And then I get into Kurosawa because then I go to the Seven Samurai. So I would get into all these different directors. And nice. Like that. So, I mean, I was a total nerd kid just watching movies all the time. And I still do. I, I watch, my wife says, you watch everything. And I do, I, I watch everything. I'm always watching something or reading up on it. And it's just, it's just something I, I love. I mean, it's my business and, uh, and it's also the love of my life. You know, my wife's the love of my life and, and, and the arts. Are, I think that me being on a set, which uh, I've been lucky to do for the last 36 years, um, uh, you know, I feel like I'm a better person and man, and human and father and friend and son and everything because I, I, I get to do what I love. So, um, and then I get to talk about it, which is fun too. I, you know, all, there's not a real downside to acting for me. So let, let me uh, transition into my question here then, because that, that really fits. You're very passionate about what you do, um, which translates into how we see it, right? We see that passion. So now it's, it's time for the portion of the show, the You Change Sean Vest Life portion of the show. Uh, so I saw Starship Troopers at a very young age, um, probably too young, you could say. Uh, and then I saw all the cartoons and it was something that just stuck with me as a kid, Space Marines, um heroism and it, it's in, it's impacted my life like as a little kid every every single team that i've ever managed professionally or taken my son's elementary school class up into like the mountains for a camp we've always been the roughnecks um i i served like a religious mission and and out where we taught they'd be like oh there's missionaries and uh what what do you guys you know do you have like a team name you know they'd ask me like we're the roughnecks um, so it's, it's been in every single aspect of my life. Uh, and even down to the fact that every single car that I've ever owned is Rico. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's just been something that has really been a core, um, <laughs> value, which is so weird because just young impressionable mind, I was like, man, he was so brave fighting those bugs. That's so scary. Like it just stuck with me. Um, so, so with that, um, at what point did you realize that Johnny Rico was a hero to people? I mean, you did the film. Um, at, at what point were people starting to approach you? Because I know I'm not unique with that. Mm. And, and be like, I love the character. You're great. You changed my life. When did you realize that? Well, I mean, I can give you, there, there's just so many, so, so many uh, uh, times that I can uh, point to. But I'll give you one in particular here. And this happened to me probably 10 years ago, maybe 11. I was working on a movie set. And and before that, it happened. I mean, there's a movie I did where I was going through a divorce. The entire cast got death from above tattoos, but they had hit him. And at the end of the day, we did our cast picture. And 83 people had death from above pictures in this. And this is you know, 12 years ago. I'm like, I'm like, well, what? This is so wild. They all did it as a, a tribute to me to show you how much they love working with me. That, everybody. The makeup. Awesome. Every, yeah. Everybody had a death from above tattoo on. So um, that's great. But there's another time where I was doing a movie in New Mexico and the, the transportation captain said to me, he said, uh, would you take a picture with my son? He's a huge fan. I go, yeah, absolutely. And he goes, yeah, he's, uh, he's my co-captain and he's also a former Marine. I said, oh, I love that. I love the Marines. And he goes, yeah, he, was, uh, he uh, got blown up by one of the roadside bombs and lost uh, both his legs and part of his arm. And I said, oh, man. At this point, I'm like crying. And then he goes, yeah, but... Uh, What's amazing is as he was, after he got blown up, he's lying on the side of the road there and his arm came in, his bare arm came in and it had death from above. He saw the death from above and then passed out and it pulled him out. Because that man became his best friend and he's doing, and his best friend is doing another tour right now. And he wants to take a picture with Rico because you two, they two bonded over and he wants to send this. So me and the makeup artist are crying this time. She covered his tattoo. She made us death from above tattoos. We took a picture and we sent it to him, which is amazing to me. Two years later, that's in New Mexico. Two years later, I'm at Warner Brothers doing All American, working on that show, and I hand my ID into um, the security guard, and the security guard takes my ID and goes, "Hey, Rico." <laughs> now my name on my ID does not say Rico. I'm just going to tell you this much, right? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't changed my name or anything. It still says Casper Van Dien, but he goes, "Hey, Rico." And he goes, uh, "I say, hey guys." He goes, "We heard what you did for that Marine, and we just we just wanted to thank you." Sorry. 
So when these Sorry, amazing someone men, cutting onions over there. <laughs> yeah. So when these when an amazing men like this that have served our country and fought for our country and do amazing things for us can come and say that I touched them in a way that that made them feel this way, they can have a re reaction like that. I I um I know that it it's the power of this business and it's the power of, of what we do. And, and, and there's a, a certain responsibility we have to, to, to be respectful to the people because it, it, there is, there's more, you know, there's the best thing in life is when we're human kindness, when we're kind to somebody else, when we do something and, and for these people to come and tell me this stuff, it touched me because I, I was just like, I'm just grateful that there are men that brave that are willing to do that. That afford me the ability to be an actor and pretend like I'm that brave to be able to do something like that. So I feel very fortunate. So when you say, are there, when did I know? I mean, there's been many options, many times, many places, but you know, there, there's been deeply impactful moments in my life where I've gone, Oh, damn, this is, um, this is much bigger than I could have ever thought for me. That's, that's powerful. Well, and, and, so, so I have to tell you too, um, that is, that is so cool. And the thing that I love too, you were talking about how your family is military and, and you didn't serve in the military, but in a weird twisted sense, you, you did right in, in this other world. Um, and then you're able to inspire and help people in the forces. That is so cool is that you were still able to influence those people. Mm -hmm. I do have to say when, yeah. uh, when Tim put up your picture and said, Hey, we're, we're having Casper on. Um, I, I've seen all the people they've interviewed and there's some really amazing people and I saw yours and I was like, this is the one, this is the one I have to put my cards in like Tim, I, I know that this is probably coming out of nowhere, but I have to be on the show because this isn't, I didn't just go buy this, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, and my wife and I'll get into this into another question. We were sat down after Tim agreed and I, I couldn't believe it. And I was like, I was just sitting there and she's like, Sean, would, would your little 10 year old self ever have imagined that you would have an opportunity just just to say hello to you let alone you know sit and chat and i was like brin this is i'm like the it's it's just unreal and so i i just want to express that like from from just me you know i'm sure you've heard so many stories but but your role in that um Ooh. was just so touching to me and if you watch the movie you'd be like why it's so violent <laughs> i don't know it just it just hit something you know and and inspired honestly, the rest of my life was just like roughnecks lead the way. Like I had a sales team and we'd always chant that rough, roughnecks lead the way. And we would show clips from Starship Troopers and they're like, what is wrong with this guy? Like, Hey, look, you find the news where you find it. <laughs> I appreciate everything. And my company's called Rico's Roughnecks Incorporated. So, uh, I am all on board. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> somebody who acted it. I live it. I live it every day. I I'll get people who go, Rico, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I'm holding toilet paper. I'm like, well, it, it happens. Yeah. It yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it's a daily thing. And I absolutely love it. I mean, I love yeah. it every time. There's not one time when somebody does a, a thing about Rico where I'm not like, Oh, this is, I can't believe this happened. I, I, I've heard stories like that. I've never really witnessed it. And it's never been my experience. My experience is it's the greatest thrill. And I, and I say it's, it's been magic because people like you to come and say this to me touches my heart, makes me incredible. I've had kids that come up to me and go, I'm named after you. And I'm like, oh, your name's Casper. Like, no, it's Rico. <laughs> Rico. <laughs> I love it. And, oh, it's, and I'm going, great. hey, they go, I'm named after you. And I go, oh, you're Rico. And they go, no, I'm Casper. So I've had both. So it's been like, oh, I love so, it. I, I, I have had both and I do have both. And my, my, a director I just worked with, his sister's marrying a woman and they're having a child and they wanted, a, a, they, they, one of them had a thing for me when they were younger. I think it's changed now for them, but they named, they're naming their <laughs> oh, child. Boy. They're having their name. Their, their son is going to be named Casper. That's hmm. fantastic. So, and, 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 and he goes, I didn't even know, he goes, I didn't even know this. My sister's <laughs> wife wanted to name their kid Casper because of you. And I'm like, he goes, would you say something? So I just did the thing for them. This just happened, I don't know, three days ago. <laughs> so, that's, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's he's great. He's, a, he's, I, the guy, he's, a, he's the director of Salvage Marines. He's the one that, and he's the one I'm doing Manhattan okay. Transfer with. So he's, a, he's a, like, I'm, my wife's the one that introduced me to him. He's a good friend of mine. And he's just, I've done a lot of projects with him, but you know, it's just 
stuff like this happens and it means everything to you when when people say stuff like this to you the, the ones that say oh, i don't like that it makes me uncomfortable i i i think there's something either really wrong with them or they're lying because <laughs> for me it would be i'd be the mis- most authentic uh, inauthentic person if i was like i don't like that <laughs> you know that, that's really heartening to hear though because it's like you, you have heard stories of people who have like idolized a certain character and then they meet the actor and they're like oh they're a huge jerk I, I just I, I really appreciate that that you are you're as good as a person as as the Rico that I grew up with and idolized. <laughs> That's great. I appreciate that. Thank you. Now I was going to save this story for a little bit later, uh, but seeing as it kind of ties into everything, story. So time. I served in yeah uh, I served in the army for ten years. Oh, thank and, you. And <laughs> uh, one of the things that is a key memory for me is. We were doing a month-long training session just in the middle of the desert in California. And we got slammed with this just, like, sandstorm. We got stuck in our tents for, like, two days. And I had my laptop with a hard drive full of movies and a projector, little projector. And everyone's like, oh, we got to watch some movie or something. Just take up the time. Like, oh, anyone ever hear Starship Trooper? And they're like, oh, yeah, I love Super Trooper. I'm like, no, no, no. Different movies. Apparently no one had seen it, so I put it on and just projected it onto the wall of the tent. It was flapping in the wind. It was very, like, wobbly. It was very weird. Uh, But everyone, for the rest of that training mission, was just like, you know what to do! (laughs) Just going absolutely nuts. The whole time, one of my sergeants, for the rest of my time in the military... Anytime I'm like, hey, how do I do this? He would just look at me and just, you know what to do. <laughs> the great uh, lines, the great lines. I mean, it's Ed so Meyer, great. he wrote Robocop and he, you know, and Paul Verhoeven who directed it. I mean, they're, they, when I read the script, I was like, oh my God, how did I miss uh, the sense of humor of the book? Because I read the book when I was a kid by Robert Heinlein. And then I went back, because in the script, it's so, the satire is just so, you know, it's so, it's so, I think, over the top RoboCop. You know, it's like mm-hmm. RoboCop is satire, but then this one is like, ba-boom. And then they're like, no, no, this is subtle. You'll see. And I, I was wrong because they it went over the head of a lot of people when it first came out. They didn't understand the, the, the sense of humor, the satire at all. It went over there, which is beyond boggling to me. But I read the script and went back and reread the book, and there's no satire in the book. The book is straightforward pro-military mm-hmm. i mean it's great it's a great book i love it to this day but the reason why i liked it when i was a kid was the power suits because you could nuke things blow them up and mm-hmm. and you right. up miles and flame torch things and kill these bugs and the skinnies and all this other stuff so i i liked it for a different reason but i was because at first i was like oh my god i understand this when i was 12 but i didn't because it wasn't there so <laughs> i just liked it for Fair. a different reason. so um i'm so thrilled that you were in a tent you got them all hooked on that because that's just uh, uh, amazing and and that's another story i'll have now it's like I, I've, I've had these things where I, you know, there's a guy that came to me who's in Malibu. I was working out there at a gym. He goes, "You don't understand. I take a picture with you because back in in Afghanistan, we're, we work out at a, a CrossFit gym called Rico's Roughnecks, and they have a <laughs> that's so great. And they had a mural of me painted up above their <laughs> thing, and, and and there was Rico, and I'm like, dude. So I took a picture with him, and I ended up working out the whole summer with him um, because you know these special forces, black ops. I was like, oh my god, but I'm working out with this dude who's like. Rico's rough next. You don't understand. And I'm like, I, I do. Un- I, I really do understand. Even when you say I don't understand, I don't understand, but I really do. So I love it. And I thank you so much. And I think, and, and I do thank you for service. My brother's army. He did uh, seven tours over in Afghanistan and Iraq. So, and, and Bosnia, one in Bosnia as well. Oh, wow. That, they've done wow. way more than me then. <laughs> Well, but he, he got issues. I love him to death, but definitely issues. I mean, that's a lot of tours. <laughs> that's a lot of tours. That's a whole lot of tours. Yeah. Well, kind of circling back to the the bug squishing aspect. Uh, there's a there's a new game that just came out that everyone's uh, very excited about. Hell Divers Two, yeah. and a lot of people have been making crossover memes and references between Starship Troopers and Hell Divers. You. You seem to have expressed some interest in well, some crossovers. I, I think it's very beautiful, and I love it. I, I, I've, been, I've been involved with all of them. You know, uh, anytime they promote it, I love that. I love the fandom of Starship Troopers. 
I, I am can tell you I'm involved with the Starship Troopers extermination game. Now they, mm -hmm. put, they put out, they released this first and it was only 3% done because you know, the, to get the feelers for it. I don't know how technical the terms are. You guys might know the terminology of that better, but it is going to be completed and it's going to be full on insane. So it'll be, you know, like Hell Divers 2 is very a tribute to Starship Troopers. Well, there's going to be a Starship Troopers and it's extermination. So, and, and, and I am going to be involved with that. Love okay. It. You obviously by your tone, you don't want, too deep a questions, but I, uh, wow, I, there's I, probably yeah, some NDAs we can't go so into. I want to say so much more. I love yeah. all the fandom for, yeah. for Hell Divers. I think that's awesome. I love that they're, that they love it. And it's been fun with the memes and everything like that. But wait till they get a load of what they're doing with this game. I'm so excited. I came, I'm like on pins and needles about it. Yeah, it's really hard for me. I'm probably saying more than I probably am allowed to say anyhow, but I, I don't give, that's you know, fair. Yeah, so well, I, I, I won't push that. Wait. But I do love, I do love the fanaticism of the fans for Starship Troopers and that it's got a whole new fan base because of that Helldivers 2. I think that's oh, really yeah. cool. And the, and the director of that, I've been messaging with him. He's so cool and everybody's nice. So I, I like all that, but I also have been messaging with the Hell, the uh, Starship Troopers extermination and, and it, it looks like, uh, you know, just Rico should be there. So that's what I think. And, uh, and I, I know what to do. It, it wouldn't be the it. same. I mean, it just wouldn't. Like, if, if there wasn't some kind of interaction or cameo... Oh, no, there has to be. I, th that would be a big missing piece for me. I mean, anything Space Marines and Bugs, I'm down. But, like, that, that would be a big... Yeah, me this, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, there'd be a big piece I, missing. Yeah, when I saw the first trailer for Helldivers 2, I was like, I didn't see the name of it yet. I'm like, oh my god, is this a Starship Troopers game? Is that what we're doing here? We're doing a Starship I thought the same thing. Well, the director... I was like... The director's a huge fan. He's he makes no uh, he makes no questions about it whatsoever. He's a sweet man, and 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 I can't wait. You know, I, I'm going to try to play that game too, and I can't play wait to play Starship Troopers Extermination. There's two things. I think it's it's phenomenal, and and the fact that it's getting a whole new audience because I think this movie, I think Starship is such a great movie, and I think that mm -hmm. Paul Verhoeven he says it's his best movie, um, but he's made so many great ones. But I think he's also said Robocop was his best. Robocop was his best movie at one interview too. But I mean, uh, other people showed me. He says it was this one. But he um, is such a smart man, and he's such a great filmmaker. And that they can make something that still has legs this many years later, twenty-seven years later, uh, it's mm -hmm. phenomenal. And the visual effects in it are are still hold up today for for what they were made back then. I mean, yeah, it's impressive. Uh, really they took so much time with it so I, I i love it and i love all the enthusiasm and i love anything that gets more fandom and for fan base for it because i, I i'm thrilled to be a part of that i mean i'm i'm awesome. also doing i, I did, earlier i did a uh like a thing about a, a, a new series i'm going to be doing with a, the director sean piccinino from salvage marines uh called manhattan transfer it's another sci-fi thing and i got to work with doug jones and walter koenig and a whole bunch of other cool oh, wow movies. yeah so we're doing and and they're like getting funds up and they're trying to get some fans involved with it too to finance it so we'll see what happens there lots of exciting things but but like yeah, nerds fun. nerds involved with it which is the cool thing because i think that you know like like con man we had all the nerds involved with that too all the all the con people were involved with con man when you saw that Love one that show. it was so much fun <laughs> to do when, when nathan filling and alan tudor called me up like casper i got a perfect role for you all you got to do is this i go <laughs> That's that's the pitch. That's literally the pitch for me. You know, like, I'm a bartender, Captain Rex. I was the bartender. Okay, that's a shaker. All right. I, well, I'm not asking you know. questions. Season two, I was this. Well, it's like, hey, look, I don't care what that motion is. I'll take the roll. Kids gotta eat. I, I love the. Okay, so the yeah, con man. I absolutely love that. And every time, I love the fact that like, wherever they went uh it, there is a bar there you were you, you just you kept popping up and i was just like that to me was hilarious and my wife's like why is that so funny i'm like it's, it's rico he keeps popping up <laughs> that's what they said to me alan alan when he told me this he's oh. like he goes that's just what it is and then he did that little spoof of starship troopers in it when when that one day oh, when yeah. I, I got to do that that was fun it was a good clip i get to slap him and everything great i loved it yeah they're funny yeah, guys. And then when we were at Comic Con, he got me to wear a dress. Only man to ever get me to wear a dress <laughs> on stage uh, in Hall H. Like you just came out in a dress? I didn't come out. I wore 
I wore a dress. Sure. <laughs> right, so, right. Phrasing, Sean. Phrasing. Phrasing's, phrasing's, phrasing's important. <laughs> walked onto stage in I a dress. Walked on the stage. <laughs> well, so, um, not that I have any problem with it. I wouldn't. I don't care. I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I love everybody. But yeah, I know. For that one, I was, uh, you know, it was just a, a thing that they, they're like, they just thought it was it was just fun. Alan Tudyk and, and Nathan and all them, all that get the whole crew of them, you know, they're just uh, uh you know awesome guys. So I love yeah, I love being part of Con Man. That's awesome. So you mentioned a few people that you've had a chance to work with over the years, and clearly, I mean, you look at the the cast list of some of the shows that you've been on, like the ones we've mentioned earlier, including Sleepy Hollow, Salvage Marines, Alita, Alita Bala, Angel, all these different things. You've had some really cool roles and some really cool shows. But while working alongside those big names in Hollywood, you've also had a couple opportunities to work alongside your wife. Now, I know from working in a family business that working with family is not always easy, and there are moments when it can be difficult. But in not in a, an attempt to get you in any trouble whatsoever uh, with the wife, what are some of the moments that you enjoy most about sharing those experiences with your wife? Oh, well, Jenny is uh, the wife I have. The wife I have now. Uh, is amazing and incredible. And the wives I had before were amazing and incredible in their way too. But uh, working with her is is uh, the easiest thing that I've ever had in in, in my life. It's, it isn't difficult. Um, when people go, hey, would your wife do this? Because you're both over here and doing this. And she's like, yeah, I'll do it. And she comes in. She's amazing. She's professional. She gets it done. She doesn't complain. She doesn't care if they don't want makeup. They don't want this. She's just She's uh, the easiest person to, to work with, and uh, she knows who I am, and, and I trust her. Also, whenever I do my auditions, she coaches me. She's she's awesome. So she's just she graduated from Groundlings. She's super smart and funny. So it's it's pretty easy. So I trust her, and and that's been a a gift, a thing that I didn't have before. Nice. So it is it is nice. It is nice to have that in in, in this uh, in this moment in my life. So oh, that's great. he's a smoke show. So it's like unbelievable. You know, she looks like, she looks like Wonder Woman. So it's like this. Yeah, this, she does. this is the day I met her. This is on my that bed. Table. That's, that's the it. day you met her. That's the day I met her. So this is what she, this is what she was wearing. And I was going through a divorce and she, I met her and I was like, the, the, and that's, <laughs> you know, you can only say things so eloquent so many times. So, you know, like when I said it like that, I think I had her. I, there you go. She's like, oh, bless him. Maybe, maybe I'll take him out for sympathy reasons. And then she's like, oh, I guess he's he's okay. I, I completely understand that feeling. My wife is also a Wonder Woman cosplayer, and she's sitting right over there. And also stunningly beautiful. So every time you mention yours and Wonder Woman, I just keep, uh, so looking cool. over it's so cute it, it, you know it's 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 the most adorable thing i went to warner brothers with my wife because she was a reference model for 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 wonder woman so like they they jim lee has drawn her as a uh, uh, wonder woman on his comic book covers she was the bombshell she was a reference for the bombshell wonder woman she was the bombshell she's the bombshell i'm i got the glasses here to prove it at the house she was also all the other bombshell characters she dressed up in all these costumes so I, like I'm only saying that because that's no, no, that's my swear. wife's <laughs> favorite cosplay of Wonder Woman is the okay. bombshell Wonder Woman. Okay, so that my, that's my wife. I've had three women come up to me over my career and go at cons and go, I got your uh, at the time, two of them were girlfriend and now wife, but they go, um, I got your wife tattooed on my body. <laughs> and I go, Okay, hmm. I'll bite. Now, usually that might not be a good thing because sometimes you know you don't want to see where it is or what it's gonna be, but you know, somebody Took it off, and she she had a she had a on her calf. She had my wife as the bombshell thing, but they knew that it's my wife, and so they and they came up and did this. So it's just like I mean, it's it's surreal to have that kind of thing, you know. Like so, I, I'm married to you know a Wonder Woman, and I'm glad you're married to a One Two Bandit. It's the greatest thing in the whole world. I love it. It's uh, you know, she can tie me up with that lasso of truth anytime she wants. I'll just tell her. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I will tell it to you so hard. Oh, yes. oh hang on, hang on. Oh, I got it. She could do it all up she wants. There you go. <laughs> Wonder Woman. <laughs> that, that is amazing. All right, Tim, we might have to scratch out that no dirty part of our, our, our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's no uh, 
showing up to get the truth. No, no, he's talking like, about his wife. Yeah, about yeah. exactly. Truth That's is important. What woman does is what she does. That is very, very important in a in a relationship is being honest. Yeah, yeah. So that I was I, very I, honest. I, I have to tell Real you about quick. this. So with with all the hell diver stuff coming out, you know, my wife would be scrolling through Instagram and there's Starship Trooper memes and stuff, and I'd be like, oh, that seems really cool because. Or there's the Klindasu drop, and there's a scene where one of the drop ships is coming down, and the camera follows it the whole way down, and then it lands, and and they come out. And I was like, that is one of the one of the best scenes. And she's like, I, I haven't seen it. And I was like, wait a moment. We've been married how long, and you haven't seen this? So we we go downstairs, and we turn it on. And she's like, are we really going to watch this? You know, I'm like, yes. I, I was like, Brayden, you know all my cars are named Rico, all the rough, you know, and I explained. She's you like, yeah, I know that. He was, oh, my God. Yeah, and I said, you, you've got to watch this. I feel like I've failed you. So she <laughs> she's sitting there watching it, and I'm trying not to just be, like, staring at her, you know what I mean, while she's watching it. And she's laughing out loud with the guy that's like, okay. frankly, the idea of a bug that thinks I find offensive. And she's, she's loving it. And at one point, Carl comes out, and he's kind of gaunt, and she goes, oh, my gosh, are they the bad guys? And so she's, like, getting it, you know? That's um, awesome. And, and I, I loved watching that with her. So um, I, I guess turning that into a question, what has been your experience with people that have seen it very recently and becoming new friends? Sorry, my wife. New, new friends. My, my wife just brought me chocolate. So she, oh. she's, she's just like, so I, I tell you, I, I like I scored. Do you know uh, what? She's in I, the other room and she hears it and she's like, time brought, to prove it. Brought, brought me chocolate. On the right, <laughs> we all just kept saying Wonder Woman, and she was summoned. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. The Wonder Woman. She's like, somehow she went out and got me chocolate. <laughs> she's like, I just oh, needed no. to hit the point home that this is real. So <laughs> wait, I'm real. sorry. So what was your question at the end? No, now? no, you're you're good. So, talking. so she she had a wonderful experience watching it because the movie holds up. It's incredibly entertaining. It's a good she's story. Me naked. We'll get to that question. <laughs> there, 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 I have that. So. What what has been your experience with people that see it for the first time, like now? I, I always say to them, 20 minutes, you can do it. You and your wife, I'll say that to you. 20 minutes, you guys can do it. That, that's in the movie. I'm just quoting the movie, all right? Oh, for a um, second. I'm like, what is he talking about? And then he's, I'm like, okay, I'm on board. <laughs> you know, Michael Ironshead goes, okay, 20 minutes. 20 minutes? We can do 20 it. Minutes. Yeah. Um, uh, my experience right now is when people come in and watch it, it's, you know, uh, I make those jokes often. About the 20 minutes and stuff like that. I do that often. I'm terrible. I do it at every con. And I also say, you see me naked to people when they, they watch the movie together. As a couple, I go, this is so awkward in front of your husband or in front of your wife. I say it all the time. Uh, and it's usually a good icebreaker. Um, I don't know if it, you know, if I've totally offended everybody, but I don't care. Um, it's just who I am. And uh, I, uh, I love the response of people. I love people that get this movie, that see the sense of humor, because it mm -hmm. is. It is satire, it is humor. And unfortunately, it's still applicable to today's political climate and times and things, and, and from both sides. You can make a mockery oh, yeah. of both sides, which I do, by the way. I don't really care about either side. It's not my, not my jam, I'm not a political person. But I do like the hypocrisy of both. And I do love that the Starship Troopers points to that in a way where both of them can claim that it's theirs or whatever, and they can see these in different people. Also people, the intelligence audience, the, 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 the audience that it has, the people that have watched it, and that really get it, they, um, I mean, they, they have an understanding that, that, that unfortunately the audience didn't have a lot of them in America when it first came out. They're like, I don't, I don't get it. It, was a, it went mm -hmm. over the head of a lot of people when it first came out, which is weird because I look back and I go, how? Um, I mean, it's, it's super obvious like when you watch it. That's what I thought yeah. when, I read, when I read the script. I go, This yeah. is so obvious, and I'm like, No, Cash, but this is subtle. And then when it went over that people's heads, I, I went, I bowed my head, I went, Okay, Paul and Ed, you were you're right, it, it was subtle. I, I, I don't understand how it's subtle, and they're like, You don't understand the way everybody's thinking. And I went, and the, But they both have genius IQs. They're, right. both, all, they're both g little genius IQs. I mean, they're both like, uh, you know, Menza and all this other stuff. But it's just so interesting to see how they really are. They're also just, they study human sociology in a way that is just like, you know, like we study an ape or something like that, where we go and study animals. They, they, they study this, the socio socioeconomical, uh, you know, situations and, and, and disparities within, uh, you know, 
uh, countries and 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 it's and political parties and it's just so surreal and it and, and just that's why I think it stings in a way and 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 people can 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 get it and 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 I think audiences today like when you say that the people that are watching these video games and they're seeing it now and it's come to a new audience I think today's audience is much more sophisticated than mm. than we used to be back in the day some people did get it and it affected them. And then other people, I've had other people come, I loved the movie when it came out and now I've rewatched it. And I went, oh my God, there's a sense of satire that I didn't understand as a kid. And I go, that's awesome that they loved it as a kid. Cause that's the same thing that happened with me with the book. I loved the book, but I didn't understand, you know? And then I was like, wait a minute. You know, so it's like, I love that it has, it has a um, life and, uh, and legs and it, and it keeps moving and it keeps going. And, it, and this movie is still being spoken about after we made it 20, made it 28 years ago and came out 27 years ago. So. Holy it's, it's been that long. So that's, <laughs> that's crazy. 1997, November See, 7th, I, 1997. Please, and, and please. No, I'm already feeling old. So, I mean, like I'm one of those ones that I'm like space Marines bugs, boom. And then I watch it as, as I age and mature and I start understanding other aspects of it. But how do you do that? How do you do the aging and maturing? Cause I'm, tr I'm trying to work on both of those. Well, okay, so here's that. Let's talk about how you've aged, sir. I, I literally just watched that show, and then you know I googled you. Like, what's he up to now? When I see that he's on the podcast, you look great. Oh, thanks. Man. Like we're we're talking what twenty mm -hmm. plus years. Like, first off, how dare you? No. Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, well done. Whatever's going on, you know, you you actually I, look I, great. I don't thank you. I don't drink. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, almost thirty years sober. Uh, I, okay. um, but I, I did drink, but that's before Starship. I, I was sober during Starship and, uh, and I, I'm a vegan and, uh, I pretty careful what I put in except for occasionally chocolate, um, into my body. And I drink mostly water and, uh, and I work out and, uh, and I read and I write and I try to, I try to sleep. I'm not very good at sleeping. And I hear that that's important to make you look youthful. You're supposed to sleep a lot, but I not very good at sleeping. Um, <laughs> My brain is always like, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I just want to make, so I have family that will be watching this and they, they all love you. When I told them that I was going to be talking with you, they're like, we have goosebumps because we're so jealous. Um, but, and some of them are really struggling with alcoholism and, you know, six months sober and some mm -hmm. are three years oh, sober. My place is the same uh, as yeah. And so we're just, we're, so, and I've, I've never, I don't drink either. I'm um, the... seeing them struggle. It's actually nice to hear you say that because you said 30 years. Yeah, July 11th will be my 30 years, God willing. Yeah, yeah, Dude, wow. that's awesome. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Dude, that's that's just that's good amazing. to hear. And so I know when when they watch this, that that that'll give them hope. You know that, that everyone can struggle, everyone can succeed. Yeah, uh, so that's really cool. So I, I do have a question for you. You talked about the shower scene. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I was talking about the tent scene. Now you brought up the shower scene. Hey, look, we could talk about all of them. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so. I heard I heard a rumor, and I, I have to, and I apologize if you've answered this elsewhere. Oh, I have. I've, I've heard you have. I, I've heard that in order for you guys to do it, that there was an agreement that Paul also had to be naked behind camera. Is that true? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, here's the, here's the truth. <laughs> okay, we're all young, ish, twenty seven. Everybody else was younger than me at the time, and now they're all the same age as me. I don't know how that happened, but at the time they were two, three years younger than me when we made the movie. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, we, we're 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 filming the shower scene, and we're all towelled up, and we're gonna get ready to get naked and be naked in the scene. And Paul walks in and goes, "Are you guys ready to do this?" And Dina goes, "He goes, are you guys chicken? All you Americans are chicken about being naked." And, and Dina goes, "Oh, if it's so easy, Paul. Why don't you do it?" And he pulled his pants down. He goes, "See." It was Fakano, the German DP, pulled this down, and they and 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 I'm like ah, and all everybody were like ah, oh, God no, and, and and I'm like Dina, and then he goes, you guys ready to shoot now? We're like yeah, he pulled his pants up back, and we went and shot, and and I go, Dina, why did you do that? And she goes, I didn't know he would pull his pants down, but now I can never undo that image. But then people are now gotten to the point where he filmed it all naked, and he was over there just you know like and it wasn't that, it wasn't anything like that. He was just effing with all us you couldn't get away with that today but <laughs> no. yeah you can't do that today it'd have been me three no, like that i don't know yeah. sure you can't just expose yourself to all your co-workers 
No, you can't. Well, we all were, Tim. but he, he did it as a like it's no it's like no big deal for for him. And in 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 his defense, uh, in in Europe, it, they don't really give a shit about the nudity. Excuse me, they don't really give a hoot nanny about the uh, nudity like we do here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're more puritanical than they are, and uh, and and that was another thing that he was trying to stress that it is no big thing. That's why the shower scene is like not a not a you know, perverse, you know, like sexual thriller. It's just us taking a shower and nobody cares. Fascinating. Right. Yeah. Just talk, everybody's just talking with another, not like it's a big deal. They're just yeah. bathing. Yeah. And that's what it was supposed to be. And he was trying to prove that to us because we were all the Americans that were more uptight about it. Huh. Was that, you know, okay. it's not, it's not, I've never been naked in front of so many women and men at the same time in my life ever. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, you know, I, I can thank Paul for that. <laughs> oh, there you go. Opportunity. You, there. you got that going for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you've mentioned your, your, uh, your love of cosplay and cons and all these things. Uh, you have a very interesting role that you did at one point for a musical. Uh, how did you find yourself doing the Deadpool musical? <laughs> and how does it feel to be one of the best on-screen portrayals of Cyclops? All right, so it, I'll give you. There's there's more to this story than I can say. My wife got to do Deadpool, the first one, and then I walked on the set and they're like, "Oh, it would be so funny to have Rico show up for you know Deadpool have a scene with him." I go, oh, "I'd totally do it," and like we couldn't get to it because they were so busy. So they came season two. They're like, "Would you play Cyclops?" And I go, "Yes." And my, my wife plays Rogue in it, mm-hmm. and, uh, so she's awesome, and I love it. But uh, I got to do Cyclops. I originally auditioned for uh, – they wanted me to audition for Cyclops, and I walked on to the set for the original one that, that Mars, James Marston got. You know, uh, I was supposed to audition for that role, and they had me all set. But when I walked in, I go, yeah, but I want to go for uh, – I want to go for um, – and so – and they looked at me like – Oh, so I um, I blew an opportunity to audition for Cyclops, and then I got to play it in the Deadpool musical. Wait, sorry, it, did it it cut out for me? You you went into audition for? They wanted me to audition for Cyclops for the original movie, right? When it first come out, and I went into there and I said I don't want to audition. I walked into the audition, them thinking I was going to audition, you know, for Cyclops, and said I'm going to audition for Wolverine, and them going. Oh. oh, so I, I could see right there as soon as I did it, th- their whole faces dropped and changed. They're like, Oh, yeah, you know, it's like you already lose the ro- you lose the audition, but unless you're young and you're like, Oh, I think this, I want to play it, I want to be as cool as Hugh Jackman, who wasn't even Wolverine yet. Um, but I still wanted to be as cool as him, uh, who does musicals for real, and uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, yeah, but I loved playing Cyclops in that in Deadpool musical too. That was a lot of fun, and and uh, and I think James Marsden did a much better job than I could have ever done. But um, um and, and I'm so grateful for him. But I did love the opportunity, and it was a lot of fun to finally play such a cool cat. So thank you. It's it's one of the few <laughs> musicals I've actually enjoyed in my life. So I did watch it. Oh, it was fun. I I had to throw that question in there because Tim hates musicals. So I love <laughs> musicals. I mostly despise them. I have a hard, really hard time with people just singing at each other for no apparent reason whatsoever. Well, you so. know, I'm, I was doing a movie in India, <laughs> and uh, and in the, in the movie I was doing it for Russell McKay, who directed Highlander, and mm-hmm. all, and uh, and I was doing this. It's called Curse of King Tut's Tomb, but we were shooting it in India, and uh, I was at the Ramba Palace in Rajasthan, and the uh, this guy said to me, he "Goes why um one of the." An, an Indian guy came up to me and said, why, all, you know, excuse me, you're an actor, an American actor. And I go, yes. He goes, why in American films do you not sing and dance? And I go, well, we do in some, we, we have musicals where we sing and dance. He goes, no, but in your regular movies, why don't you sing and dance? I go, oh, well, because like when you cross the road in real life, you don't sing and dance. And he goes, but why not? And I go, you're 100% correct. I stand corrected. We should be singing in every movie that we do. You're 100% correct. He's like he couldn't he couldn't fathom it. And then I I actually couldn't convince him that you know you know how do we are in real life. He's like, but why not? But why not? And every time and I was like, oh, you know what? You're right. Why don't we? We should. So I disagree with you, Tim. We should sing in everything. 
So yeah. what you're saying is we need Starship Troopers, the me the musical with Mike yes. Ironside. You get 20 minutes, 20 minutes, we'll do 20 it. minutes. Yeah. We can do it. We can do it. Yes, Sim City, there you go. Now I'm now you're warming up. Now you see you making the mark here. You could be writing these musicals. Look at this, Tim. He's, he's got it. You gotta embrace, you gotta embrace that artistic sense that you have, that sense and sensibility that you have. You shouldn't reject it anymore. No more rejection, no more naysaying here. Starship Troopers the musical, what? We've been missing this. We we have. It's something we didn't know that we wanted. Yeah. And now I and now it is the, wanted it. something we need. And Tim is like, oh shit, what did I just do? It's it's you did good, Tim. You did good. <laughs> you did Imagining good. the song that accompanies just killing the bugs. It's Tell it's very all. doom eternal, just rip and tear kind of kind of a musical. I just beautiful. imagine him like, you know, Rico running up over the hill and there's a tree there and he kind of swings around the tree shooting his gun. You know what to do. <laughs> Carl coming in. It'd be like uh, springtime, uh, springtime in the, you know, the, what is it? The producers. Uh, the the only yeah. way the musical would work is if, if the ferret was a, like a puppet, you know? Uh, so, yes. Yeah. You know, you got to have the little puppet ferret. So, okay. You were talking about X-Men. Kind of, and I, I went down a little journey in my mind. Forgive me. I'll, I'll guide you with me here. Um, so R Ray Park is in X-Men. Uh, you also worked with him in Sleepy Hollow. Uh, um, obviously, he's a crazy talented like fighter, right? With the choreography and stuff. Yeah. Uh, as as Brom in Sleepy Hollow, which you're fantastic in, by the way. That movie's so great. Um, when when you when did you learn that you had to fight with him, and did that make you nervous? No, not at all. I got to meet him when I when I got to find out that I was fighting him. This young, he was a young kid then. He hadn't done he had done Darth Maul, but he hadn't hadn't come out yet. And he showed me the video. He's like, "Oh my God, uh, Casper! Um, I just wanted to show you this." And he showed me him and the stunt coordinator because we had the same stunt coordinator as Darth Maul, you know. And, and mm -hmm. that. so uh, they showed me them fighting out of makeup and then in a makeup test and everything. And he goes, "What do you think, Casper?" And I go, "I think I should get your autograph right now." Yeah. <laughs> Smart move. Smart move. That's what I said yeah. to him. And and we've been friends ever since. We've done three projects together and I love him to death. And he's a great guy. Oh, and, that's and awesome. Incredible fighter. Uh incredible. But he's he was a kid when I met him. Now he's a man, kids and his whole he's life. A man. But uh yeah, that's very but, cool. uh, but he was a kid when I met him. He was just a young guy. Oh, see, I, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize the the timing on that. And so that that's fascinating. Yeah, but so he, he's I saw the fight scene. Of him slicing them in half before it came out. Wow. Okay. And I was oh, like, that's crazy. oh my God, this is <laughs> epic. This is epic. I go, is our fight going to look like this? And they're like, no, it's a little different. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but, but you did get cut in half. And so yeah, maybe yeah. half the man I am today. Right. <laughs> <Man. Rumps. laughs> yes. Everybody Good. else lost their head in the movie, not me. <laughs> Just yeah, that half. is actually weird that. Everyone else got their heads cut off except for you. Yeah, well, you, you got Darth Maul just straight targets. across the waist. Yeah, I wasn't. His, I wasn't one of his targets, and so like he didn't want to fight me, and and that's the point that they were trying to prove. So that the headless horseman was like, I was just like a gnat, and I wouldn't leave him alone. And since I kept pursuing him and was like, no, I got him. I I did lose my head because I kept fighting him and I didn't have to. And Johnny's like, he doesn't want you. And so like if I had listened to Johnny Depp, I I'd still be here today. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I <laughs> well, hey. may, maybe not your character because that was in like the 1600s. They they probably would have. Yeah, in the 1600s, they would have beheaded me or something or hung me or, you know, whatever it is that they do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> you can't say that, Captain Rex. You I'm can't say that. I'm good. <laughs> I'll just show off my Rico's ref next year to give him a little Outstanding, Cooper. You know what to do. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, Casper, we love to get our, our, our followers involved whenever we can. We've got a Facebook group of over 214,000 uh, members. We've the rough got, yeah, we've got, uh, we, you know, our Twitter followers, our threads, all that stuff. We did get a question that I wanted to use from one of our Twitter followers, and he had a question for you. Uh, his name is David Birch, 1982 from Twitter. Uh, I know it has, it goes by X now. I still call it Twitter. Anyway, uh, he's a huge Alita Battle Angel fan. And so his question is, what aspect of Alita drew you to audition for Alita? 
whether it's something specific to her story or just staying part of the sci-fi world. So interesting story. Thank you for asking. I love, I love anime, love all that stuff, but that's not what brought me to this one. My buddy Garrett Warren, who's the stunt coordinator and second unit director on Avatar, Lincoln, the Master, Logan, all these things. He was a, a stunt guy on Star Trek Troopers. Actually, it was Jake Busey's stunt double. But he won my he's the godfather of my kid and, and, and he's been in my life for forever. He sent me a thing. I'm on this thing doing a Doolittle's Heroes playing Jimmy Doolittle, great war hero, um, years ago. And he goes, Casper, um, Put yourself on tape. Do this, do this, and do this. Uh, put it on for Robert Rodriguez. I go, Garrett, I can't. He goes, just do it. So I put myself on tape, do this thing, whatever he tells me to do, do this whole scene and everything like that, send it to him. And then he goes, okay. And then he calls me up. He goes, okay, you got it. You're coming in to do this. I'm like, so I had to get the movie to let me off for two, three days. I go down, film, put all this stuff on, go down there, film Rob. All Robert Rodriguez said was when he saw it was, wait, is that Casper Van Dien? Why is he auditioning for this? It was okay, we'll make it a part, not a stunt part, because it's a stunt because I break the glass and I, mm -hmm. I kill a little girl in it because he goes, he goes, This is so awesome. It's like this is what Rico would have become if he became a drug addict and was in the future. And, then, <laughs> and I'm in a scene with Christoph Waltz, and he like all he wants to do is talk about Starship Troopers, and he goes, You don't understand. Um, I have like a, you know how you have music playlists? I go, Yeah, yeah. He goes, I have I have movie playlists, and I have like 150 to 200 music movies that I play in the background, and I turn them turn the volume down really low and I have them in the background while I'm writing or editing. And, and I, I, I just have like a thun, rolling thunder that plays. But then when three movies come on, I turn off the rolling thunder and I blast the, 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 the sound. I mean, and one of those movies is Starship Troopers. And it's go, the oh, Klindathu I drop for sure. I've heard that a million yeah. times. <laughs> and he, goes, and he, goes, he goes like this, he goes, he goes, you don't know how many times I watch that? A month. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome his photographer's name is rico he's like and then i go to take my pictures for it and he, and he goes hey casper you don't know how many times you want i go a month he goes yeah and i go yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> he's so cool robert rodriguez is the coolest guy we almost did the starship troopers series together he was gonna direct it but then he got on big boba fett and he got on his other things and mm -hmm. So call, call him, call him. Oh, I love Robert. He's the sweetest Make a thing. Just oh, a, yeah. Just such Robert, talented, it's time. Such a talented guy. I wish, I wish he could do it. I wish we would do it. They were, it was going to be old man Rico. So um, they would have had to age me a little. Well, a little. You know, Seeing as you're so well preserved and just. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could be shifting me now. <laughs> so is that. You're, you're saying old man Rico is what it would have been. I, I was going to ask because you're this character and I'm sure you have like head cannon and, you know, you've got um, uh, Traitor of Mars and, you know, Starship Troopers 3 and that kind of stuff where the cannon kind of does whatever. If you had your dream role as Johnny Rico, you know, to redo the role, what would that look like to you? I, I would love to do old man Rico. I'd love to come back and, and like what we were going to do. And that is, you know, have, have roughnecks come back and lead the roughnecks. I think it would be fun to do. I think that there's a, I think it would be an interesting series. I think it would be really fun to do. And I think that, it, you know, the, the satire is the thing that would be the most fun for me. I mean, of course, all the action is great and the bugs and the different things, but there's different worlds to, 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 to go on that. And then having to bring in young people into it would be, it'd be interesting to have that to be more like a, a Michael Ironside type character who to this day is 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 a friend of mine who I still hear his voice sometimes when I'm acting in it. Um, you know, he played Ratchek in it, Ratchek mm -hmm. Rodsman. So mm -hmm. um he, you know, was very inspirational for me on Starship Troopers. And uh I think to to be that character for others would be um uh, would be awesome. So and I think Rico has earned that spot and and, and that right to be there in, in this. And I think it would be fun to 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 play off of that into a, a future of the Starship Troopers universe. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be cool. Especially if Rico's been in the military that long. They've probably gone up a couple ranks since then. Yeah, well, I mean, in the animated, he went all the way up to general. I think he's also, I mean, he's been, uh, so he's been around. I mean, I'm 55, so I think I could be that, right? You could Can pull you it off, yeah. Maybe a little. With the... With how fast you move up in rank in, in the Starship Troopers world because <laughs> people get murdered. Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure. All, I'm, all the ranks above you are just gone. And they're it's all, almost, they're all, everybody just seems to get mutilated so quick in that. It was so funny when Starship Troopers first came out. There was somebody that once said, you know, this is a pro-fascist, pro pro-war movie. I go, obviously, you haven't watched it. 
And they go, what do you mean? I go, you obviously haven't watched the movie. He goes, no, it is. It's a pro-war movie. I go, no. I go, everybody dies. I go, everybody dies. I mean, there's very few people <laughs> that live in it. So if you're saying that this is a pro-war film, you didn't watch it. Do you know what I they go, did? Yeah. They did, but the propaganda worked. They probably can't do it. They're sitting there and they're oh, like, no. yeah, I'm going to oh, do no. my part. No, it totally worked. I'm they're doing my part. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, they're going to kill people and bugs. <laughs> You've got the really mobs need to get some, there. Uh, need to get some media literacy in schools. I don't. Oh, I really, God. You know, it, it, it's surprising sometimes. It's surprising when, when, when I would have that argument with people. And, but it, it, it's an interesting thing because it, it, it doesn't matter which side it is on. Again, again left and right. People have missed the point on both sides. It oh, is yeah. an audience that it gets it. It's a certain audience that gets this, that understands it, and understands the satire and the brilliance of it. Some people thought, oh, this is insulting the military. I go, absolutely not. I grew up in a military family. They're the ones that are going to get this the most, and they're the ones that are mm -hmm. going to appreciate the most. And 100% is the truth. They, yeah. <laughs> they, they love it. And if you can poke fun, there's nobody that can poke fun at themselves better than anybody that served in the military. Those people are the people that have the best sense of humor. They're real and authentic because they've seen some stuff that other people will never see. And that's just my opinion. That's what I grew up seeing and, and experienced, and in just my relationship and my interactions with them throughout my career. I would agree with you. I think of a lot of guys in the military. I think of them as like the the farmers insurance. Uh, they know a thing or two because they've seen a thing or two. You know, yeah, yeah they definitely, yeah. they definitely. I mean, it's like I look at my my grandfather who was one of the three survivors of his battalion, World War One, uh, you know, Marine Corps, and, and and then you know, I just look at all these men and what they went through. My dad, who, you know, uh, he didn't think he was in combat, even though his plane got riddled with bullets, you know, going in and out of Da Nang, and. Uh, and, you know, I, I, my other grandfather, medical corpsman, they called him Bones because he was always putting people back together on the, on the front, you know. So, you know, this is these are the things that, you know, that's the real stuff. And like that guy that we were talking about earlier who got blown mm -hmm. up, you know, all these these men, you know, these people, they they know stuff that I will never know. Their stories yeah. affect me deeply. And and I, I, I'll tell you this much. I'm I'm always brought to tears when they. When they when they talk and they they do this, I got to speak in front of my military school the other day. I got to be the guest speaker, and all these men that had served in the military got up before me, and I was the speaker, the guest speaker. And but all these great men spoke before me, and um, men that have done you know, served in the military done so much more than I could ever do. And I'm the guest speaker. I, I got up and afterwards I was I was in awe, and I got to tell them that I was in. You know, I just wanted to tell them that, you know, I told them all the story, what I said. I said, it's kind of hard to follow all of you guys and, you know, and being an actor and doing this. But I, I told them the story about the Marine, uh, and that story that we just said. And I said, so I wanted to say this to you guys. I want to thank you for giving me a, uh, for men like you and men like him. They gave me the taste of what it is to feel like what a real man is and what you guys do for us. So I just wanted to thank you for that honor, for that um that that opportunity that you've afforded me by doing what you do and uh i'm i'm really grateful and appreciate it, and that's the most i can do for it you know so and it is it's the most i can do is to, to show my appreciation for it it is a is a deep regret i have that I, I i didn't serve um but i i do take pride in that i've always only done uh things that support our military and support mm -hmm. uh and women that serve, I would never do anything to disrespect them in any way, shape, or form because, um, well, I grew up in that and I, I know what it's, I, I know no, you, have a, you have an appreciation, obviously, for oh, what, I, done, uh, what they do. Uh, yeah. utmost, utmost respect. Yeah, very clear. I, I have to tell you, my, my brother's in the military. He and I were firefighters together. Uh, and then he went off. Firefighter, man. It was a good time. It was wildland firefighting. I, I don't miss it. <laughs> it was a hard job. Uh, but he, he was a hot. captain. Oh, there was times I thought my face was going to melt off, uh, but he's, he's a captain in the military and he's actually the one that bought me this for my birthday. He's, he and I are very, very close when it comes to uh, our appreciation of roughnecks. He, he made me watch all the cartoons as a kid and, and all that stuff. So I know that he'd really appreciate me just giving him a shout out with you here, but uh, yeah, he's, we well, thank him for my service. Oh, for he'll, 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 he'll watch it. He'll see it. <laughs> I didn't serve. They both apply. They both apply. Uh, but we're going to wrap up with one question. Very important because 
you get to a certain point in your life where people stop asking you this very critical question. Uh oh What is your favorite dinosaur? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Velociraptor. Hmm. That was quick. All Beautiful. Right. A classic. I love it. Well, All right. Well, when I was a kid, I did, and I even loved the Jim Carrey <laughs> imitation of it when he was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best version <laughs> well Casper thank you so much for being on our show today uh, where can our where can our listeners go and find more about you and more about your work uh, and if you have anything that you want to promote anything you're doing please tell us now um, well you can find me at Casper Van Deen on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or IMDb. I'm on all those things. Uh, and uh, as far as things that I've got going, I've got Manhattan Transfer coming out that I'm supposed to be working on. I've got a couple other things coming out, but I have a couple other movies that are out right now that are uh, on demand, like Matt Heidi, which I play an insane uh, dictator slash president of, uh, of Switzerland, but there's a lot of Starship Keepers references in it. It's the cheesiest movie I've ever done. Um, we fight against lactose intolerance. We kill people with torvalone through the head, and we hot cheese fondue people for fondue boards. So fantastic. it's literally the cheesiest movie. Um, and that was fun. And then I've got a couple other ones that are out. I just got some wild stuff out right now. So I'm I'm having fun, and uh, I'm just grateful that you guys wanted to say hey. So I appreciate it. And awesome. and get ready for Starship Troopers extermination. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm there oh, already, so. sir. <laughs> that is, Look. I am pumped. All Thank right. you so much. And we'll put all those things in the show notes and in the description below so our listeners can check them out. Absolutely. Right. And guys, we want to remind you that subscribing is the single most important thing you can do to help our show to continue to grow and convince amazing guests like Casper Von Dean to come on our show and, and have these great conversations with us and give you guys moments that you can uh, laugh along with. So please click the like and subscribe button down below. It doesn't hurt. It only helps. And uh, be sure that you go check out uh, Casper's work as well and look forward to Starship Troopers Extermination. I know we are, and um, that's going to be a thing. Sorry, mm -hmm. honey. You're going to lose me for a very long time behind a computer or Xbox. So it's going to happen. So Play on that Play note. PlayStation. PlayStation? PlayStation? Oh. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't make me go buy a PlayStation. Come on. <laughs> I would. You got to do it, PlayStation. Uh, the console or Starship Troopers Extermination. You got to do it for either one. Tim, you yeah, know what to I know. do. I know you know what to do. <laughs> Welcome to the Roughnecks. Come on, all you want to live forever. Oh. Sorry, honey. It's apparently it's a thing. Rico said I had to. All right. Yeah. And on that note, goodbye. Bye. Copyright 2024 FSF Podcast. Reference any specific product or entity mentioned on this podcast does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by FSF Podcast. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact us via email at info at fsfpopcast.com.